I got into journalism in a very indirect way, and that's kind of a long story. <laughs> um, of course, I was an English major. Um, my school actually did not have a journalism department, so English was really the closest I could get. Um, when I graduated, it was 2001, and about three months later, 9-11 um, happened. And uh, the consequences after that were that the job market really tanked. And so I had a lot of friends from school who were entering jobs in finance or buying, um, buying in retail or things of that sort. But finding a journalism job proved really, really difficult. Um, I ended up taking my first year off and going to Central America, which I thought I would stay for a couple of months, but I ended up staying for almost a year. When I came back a year later, um, I was trying to get a job, you know, sending resumes out. Um, I didn't really have much on my resume except a lot of waitressing jobs. Um, temp agencies actually wouldn't even talk to me because they wanted somebody with at least two years of office experience. So whereas, you know, three years before um, I had gotten temp jobs within five seconds, you know, applied, gotten callbacks, started work on a Monday. Um, this was a whole different experience. So I didn't want to stay in Boston. I knew that much. Um, so I left and went to Denver. My brother had recently moved to Denver for school. I had a couple of friends there. Um, not the smartest decision because if the job market in Boston is not great, it's much worse in Denver. So, um, you know, I, I basically was applying for jobs, you know, at the, the local magazine there, um, the Denver newspaper, um, and there were just no openings. And so I applied to one of the alt-weekly newspapers um, for a sales position. It said it was an account manager. And my thought process was, well, if I can just get into the newspaper, then I can just kind of sidle my way over to the editorial side. So I can start in sales, but I'm sure I'll be able to just kind of transfer to the edit side eventually. And what I learned is that's not really how it works, even if you're within the company. Um, but I had a really fun job as an account manager. I worked for one of the senior sales executives. Uh, the sales team was doing really well. Um, it was lots of happy hours. We had a lot of accounts that were restaurants and clubs and things like that. So I just had, you know, perks all over the place of um, free concerts at Red Rocks and, you know, restaurants wanting us to come in and, and sample their food. And it was really cool to be right out of college and have that type of job. And I met a lot of cool friends through that job as a very young, vibrant company. Um, and that basically, I used that company to transfer out to San Francisco because they also had newspapers out here, the SF Weekly and the East Bay Express. So I asked them to transfer me after visiting San Francisco for the first time. I was sold. I was in love with the city. Um, and I said, I know you have papers out there and I want to go work for them. And, you know, you can't get anything a lot of times unless you ask for it. So they said, OK. And uh, I moved out here again, not knowing anybody. I had no contacts here, nobody's couch I could crash on. And I just had to figure it out in a very short amount of time, but showed up and just started working and proceeded to have essentially an eight-year sales career. As time went on, I realized I am still in sales. And I remember sitting at my desk at Lonely Planet um, probably about six years into my sales career. And I was doing well, and you know, it could be a very lucrative road. And But I just sat there, and I was looking at the Lonely Planet books, which I was a huge fan of. Um, because I was a big traveler, and I just looked at the books and said, I don't want to be selling these books, I want to be writing these books. And I know that I could write these books better than whoever wrote this book that I'm reading right now. Or I could say this in a better way, or in a different way, or in a more compelling way. Um, but I hadn't done any writing since college. So I just knew that I had to make the decision and make the move to get out of sales. And so I quit and I actually moved to Uganda and took a job at an international nonprofit um, and worked in international development for about four months. 
And uh, that was my kind of interim in between um, editorial work. I actually thought I was going to foray into the nonprofit world. And when I returned to the States, I was applying for jobs in nonprofit as well as kind of throwing things out to different editorial jobs, which I thought this is such a long shot, you know, I'm getting old, you know, there's people with so many more years of experience than I have, you know, people have been editing for 10 years, and at this point I've been in sales for eight years and done like a year in nonprofit, you know, this is a real long shot. And I just was throwing things out left and right, but just kind of trying anything, you know, um, to see what would happen. And then I got a break as a travel editor at a startup, a travel startup. I, it was not glamorous at first. I was hired as a contractor. I was making $15 an hour. Um, I had no benefits. I'd left a very stable sales career of salary, benefits, travel, gold status on airlines, and, you know, instead moved to the Tenderloin and was barely able to pay my rent. But that changed pretty quickly. I got hired full time. Um, I spent about a year there. I formed their whole content strategy. They bought up a couple of other companies. I was writing about travel. I was writing about San Francisco. I was, the main point was I was writing and I was doing a little bit of side projects on the side just to build up my writing portfolio again and to kind of get back in the groove of doing that since it had been probably a decade since I'd been working on that craft of writing. And, uh, you know, the work paid off because eventually 7x7 called me and said, you know, we think you'd be a really good fit for this job. <laughs> 